Okay. This is Beam NG Drive. It's uh, not necessarily a game at this point, more of like a tech demo or something. And I'm gonna make this video because I want to show some people just what this is. Now this Stock Car Madness map. I downloaded this off of the forums. It's pretty cool. It's the first map that I found where I was like, hmm, yeah, I think I might want to play that. Um, but basically, this the founding principle or idea or whatever this whole thing is based on is, was it soft model physics or something? Real-time soft model physics? I don't know. Uh, what it comes down to is extremely realistic um, damaging to your vehicles. That's what's really... Let me get the easy one. Rally. That's what's really drawn me to this game, is um, just how it how it handles damage to vehicles. That's that's the big draw for me. Uh, it's also you know heavily more more sim. Um, it's heavily more sim than arcade, as far as everything goes when it comes to racing. Um, let me try the default one here. I just want to see if I can... Are they all manual? Alright, let's get a different car. Let's get that muscle car from the 70s. The Moonhawk. So here's here's the standard interior of, you know, a typical 70s muscle car, right? I hit Q, that should free up my training. Yeah. Right, first thing you see the tachometer works, yeah, uh-huh. Turn signals work. We got hazard lights. And the game also has headlights. And not just your standard headlights. It's got high beams too. And if you notice they're on the dashboard, you might not be able to see it in the video, but there's a high beam indicator. Uh, there's also parking brake. And you may have noticed that there's a parking brake indicator on the dashboard. That is true of all cars. Also, look down where your feet should be. The parking brake is actually getting depressed down there. Hit the gas. You see the gas pedal moving. And the brake pedal moves, too. Now, this vehicle, it's automatic, as you can tell from the dashboard there. You know, parking, reverse, neutral, all that good stuff. So let me hit Q again. Q. Alright, there. So, this is how you would expect a, an automatic to work, I guess. I mean, you just go and, and it just goes. Let me hit Q again. Now we're in neutral. It's not working, right? Think, oh my gosh, not working. Nope, you can manually shift this automatic. The brake still works. So if you prefer to shift, and you know the car you've chosen is an automatic, don't worry about it. I mean, just, you just gotta know what keys to hit in the game to make it happen. Because there have been times when. Uh, Certain games have really annoyed me that, you know, if I hold the brake down for a certain amount of time, it then goes into reverse like this is doing. It doesn't doesn't annoy me as much now that you know, we've got reverse lights on just about all the vehicles that come with the game, which aren't very nice. Reverse lights are nice. Brake lights. And turn signals and hazards, of course. I mean, these are just little things that... You know, after I'm pretty much interested in a game, and I start seeing all these little things, that just makes the game even better. But yeah, this is this is your standard Moonhawk, and I don't wanna I don't wanna do this track in that car. So let's get the easy mode car. Or actually, Civetta Bolide. I did not expect. This is not an easy car to drive. 
but this car is actually the one that I had the most luck with on this track so far. That's a little strange in my mind. But this is this is the one that I think I can actually handle. A little front wheel drive, hatchback, rallying, whatever. I haven't I haven't really looked into uh, all the details and changes what they do for different variants of these cars. There's your parking brake, and this is a newer car. We didn't have parking brake pedals. Got them in the in the uh, center column there, and you can see it's being pulled. Just move the camera down. See ya. Uh, let's see here. And of course, you got headlights and the dash lights come on with the headlights. There's your high beam indicator. It's just so nice that they, they do all these little things in this game. Or this tech demo, whatever, this engine, whatever you want to call it. Ugh, I love it. Um, one thing would be cool if I could figure it out. Because all the cars uh, that I've played with so far, we got the tachometer that is totally functional, we got the speedometer that's functional. It would be really interesting if I could figure out a way to display those values on the screen and the heads up display type thing like a, like a fairly typical racing driving game would do. Let's, let's do this track. I mean, that's, this track was the first thing I found where it's like, hey, I might want to ride around that track. Or video while I do it. And you see the shadows moving on the ground. It's got day night cycle in this. Gotta get moving. I don't like doing this at night. And uh, there will be a link to the forum thread. Uh, we can get this map in the description. And very good start here. Now I, I have watched uh, quite a few YouTube videos and when people get their cars into this situation they seem to think that it's broken and they absolutely need to reset it. But if I just hit Q, I mean it's it's not completely broken. It's like the transmission is just messed up sometimes. In this case I think the car is actually broken. Oh wait wait here we go. Just keep hitting Q, man. I mean, if, you, if you're if you really not ready to reset, give up on your vehicle, just keep hitting Q and uh, see if that'll do it for you. Uh, and uh, driving into water, you don't really want to drive into water in, <laughs> in this thing. It will kill your engine. You see there's actually a check engine light on the dashboard that's come on. Basically, the engine's not running anymore. It's not, you're not going anywhere. So you're going to have to reset. All right. Yeah, it's gonna be night. I'm not gonna like that. Lights on now. All well, people in the stands cheering and clapping. That's the the guy that made this map. Good job on that. I like that kind of stuff. It's, yeah, it's cheesy. It's cool. You know, if any any big name game developer released a racing driving game with that kind of stuff in it today, the probably uh, be a black mark on the game. You know, the game would, viewers would kind of mark off for that kind of silliness. And then, you know, fans of something, they make their own thing, I, I think it's great that he had those cardboard cutouts of people basically. It's nice. It's a nice touch. And I am playing I am playing using a PlayStation 3 controller. Very well from a driver's seat view with a controller like this. If I had a wheel set up, then I might go for the uh, driver's seat view. I can do a little bit better on the wheel. It's just, it's just something that's always, it's just always been that way for me. Even back when I was actually playing on a PlayStation, I had a, I had a little bit of trouble with Gran Turismo games over the years. Lights on this suck. It's not right. But yeah, I love Gran Turismo games for the most part. Um, and headlights are done. I got to reset. And you know what? I don't want to race at night. So let's. Alright, 
that control E to bring up your vehicle selector. Ibishu COVID. Rally. So as I was saying. It's not entirely unfair to say that I've had a little affair with uh, the Gran Turismo series. I was there for the first one on the original PlayStation console. Loved it. Grand Turismo 2, Grand Turismo 3, I think. See, okay, yeah. In Grand Turismo 2, they, they had already started to move features from the game in there. Um, little things. Like, um, I'm trying to think of a way to describe it. Basically, there was a graph that would show you your engine RPM against your torque, against your engine's torque curve. And you could set your gear ratios on this graph. And it was just a really intuitive interface. It was a really neat way of doing it. It made a lot of sense to me. Um, but I believe that, that graph was just completely got rid of the one too. So, you know, even with my, what, what was at one time, the most favorite racing game in the entire world ever, second version of it, they're already removing features that I thought were just crucial to the experience. Um, I think it was uh, I think it was Grand Turismo 3 Ace I think that one I got pretty frustrated at how long it took them to release that one. And I believe there were there were rumors probably about actual statements from the company about what some features that were be in it and not um, that may have been Grand Turismo 3 may have been the first one where you know, people were kind of talking about it's going to have online multiplayer, and it just didn't. And I don't I think it was the fourth one where they actually did have a networked multiplayer capability, but it wasn't it wasn't designed to work over the internet. So you had to have um, I don't remember how many consoles you could link up over the Ethernet adapter, but you had to have an Ethernet module adapter on your PlayStation 2 to even use that. And then it was only you know, you, yeah, you had network racing with your friends, but it was over local network only. There were people that figured out how to use Hamachi to run servers and try and race each other on the internet. Um, PlayStation 2's with Grand Turismo 4. Um, and it was just terrible. It, it was just not good. Because the game was designed with a local network in mind and not all the lag of an internet. Connection. Uh, we broke it. It's broke. But yeah, I'd love to be able to figure out how to display the uh, speed up on a heads up so I know how fast I'm going when I hit something like that. Since I don't really, I'm not really comfortable using the, using the driver's seat. PlayStation. <laughs> this thing, this whole Beam NG drive thing, it's like I said, it's not really a game at this stage. It's it's basically a technology demo to show off things that they've done, things they can't do. Um, it's in alpha. If you really want to play with it, you are going to have to pay for it. You do have you know, an actual free tech demo file that you can download, but it's just got the basic test, test map and one vehicle of the truck. So, I mean, you can download that free thing and play around with it and see if, see if it interests you at all. But I think I spent about five minutes in a tech demo and I'm like, well, then, to take my money. I, I want, you know, I want the, I want the version where I can actually do more, have more vehicles, play around some more, just on, just on the test track, and just with the pickup truck. I don't know if I, I'd like to get into uh, creating things for this game. 
probably have the skills and the ability, but I don't, I don't know the 3D programs. So I would have to learn 3D programs. I don't think I have the time to put in to be able to do that. Uh, you know, making tracks and maps would be kind of cool too. I don't, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm the right person for that job at this stage of my life. I have to. Way, way too many hours towards working to really try to learn something about like this. I mean, if there's stuff that can just be done in Photoshop, it's super easy for me. I have been using, using Photoshop since the 90s. I know what I'm doing there. I don't learn. You learn too much in Photoshop. I should say. Uh, from what I've been reading on the forums, oh, it's the same turn that got me last time. From what I've been reading around on the forums, you're good. You'd have to get into this 3D pretty much. Too. I don't know. I don't even know for sure which programs would work best for creating a game like this. Like 3ds Max is that even still a thing? I don't think I see people talk about that. Cinema 4D, uh, Blender, I've seen Blender mentioned in the forums by people that are working on that. And I don't, I don't know the first thing about Blender. So. A scary thought if I start thinking about getting into creating stuff for this game. It's a pretty sensible layout for a track, I think, for the most part. Pretty cool. It's a little, little bit of craziness back there. I don't think that water, that water stream I ran through, that could be better. Because it didn't slow me down at all. I ex kind of expect that to slow me down a little bit when I hit it. I'm actually going to finish the track, which, uh, that's an accomplishment for me at this stage, finishing this track without destroying my vehicle. <laughs> oh wait, I still have to go through the neighborhood, so I'm not even close to the end yet. There's a little, uh, apartment condo complex to drive through. You know, with this being not really a game at this day, it's just a technology demo. This, this is an open world sandboxy goodness. If you don't want to stick to the track, you don't have to. You can drive anywhere the car is physically capable of driving. Well, like I said, this map, this map is a, is a user creation. It doesn't even come with the default package that you get after you give them your money. Thing. Give these guys your money because they have created something really cool here. I think it's got a ton of potential. And I cannot wait for them to, you know, keep working on this basically and come up with something that is polished. Something that could actually be released on Steam and everywhere else without a million people complaining and saying, This is terrible. So much potential here. Oh, my headlights aren't working. Darn. <laughs> Most of the side markers still work. Oh, I guess I didn't have side markers, just the front and rear. But yeah, there is there's a wiki for this game. A wiki site. It's not really needed though. I haven't looked at the wiki. So it's it's not it's not as bad as Minecraft in that respect. Where you know when I got into Minecraft, I, it was it wasn't too terribly difficult to figure things out in Minecraft. But with Minecraft, um, you know everything be becomes a lot easier once you know about the wiki. Or in this game, you just hit F1, and it shows you all the defaults there. I have not looked into changing any of the keys or anything yet. And like I said, I'm using a PlayStation 3 controller. 
um, with the um, I think it's Motion Enjoy driver and in that driver I can tell it that it's an Xbox 360 controller so it works out really nicely and if I hit F1 again I'll show you the advanced things and if you see there where it says Q toggle shifter mode Q that's that's basically what will switch it between a manual and automatic transmission regardless of what your vehicle has so that's something some people may want to keep in mind if they care about these things you know, if they, if they really insist on driving a car manually it's probably still going to be possible to do what you want even if the car you're using has a, an automatic transmission on it so yeah And like I said, I think um, this thing is so cool. It's not really a game at this stage. You know, maybe when it is a game, uh, you know, they'll have like in-game remapping of these keys and stuff. But right now, it's just not needed. <laughs>